This is Gordon Winrod, pastor of Our Savior's Church, Gainesville, Missouri. This cassette is entitled, The Two Covenants. The Jews are all members of the international sect of the Pharisees. They are the workers of the world system of Antichrist, which is now almost risen into open full world power. Their ascendancy into power has been achieved by lies. They took over Russia in 1917 and changed their Jew-sounding names to Russian-sounding names. They called themselves then Mensheviks, Bolsheviks, the Kerensky Provisional Government, and Communists, but they were all Jews. In Iran, they are Shah, Islamic holy men, interim provisional government, and Communists, and friends of the Palestine Liberation Organization leader, Yasser Arafat, another crypto-Jew. In the United States, the Antichrist Jews are acceptable by the public now as our entertainers, merchants, religious leaders, company owners, business leaders, and governmental leaders. This is because through seminaries and pulpits of American Christendom, the Jews and crypto-Jew preachers have persuaded the American churchgoers to believe that the Jews are God's chosen race, the people of the book, who believe the Old Testament the descendants of Abraham with whom God made the Old Covenant, and that the Old Covenant of God is still in effect with the Jews now. Without having believed such lies, the American people would discourage, rather than encourage, the Jewish world system of Antichrist into world power. The scripture says that because nominal Christians received not the love of the truth that they might be saved, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. And then shall that wicked be revealed, as it is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11 and verse 8. Because nominal Christians believe the lies of the Jews, that Antichrist Jews are Abraham's children, God's chosen people of the Old Covenant, the Jewish world system of Antichrist will be permitted to rise into open full world power in Jerusalem and the very Antichrist will be revealed, that son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. As scripture declares in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. There is a great lack of understanding in Christendom concerning the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The misunderstanding and confusion on the subject have been purposely spread by the Jews. Crypto-Jew churchmen have intentionally confused their hearers. The other pastors and priests are simply ignorant of the truth of God's word concerning the matter. Careful study of God's word is required to ascertain the truth. There are some simple facts which we need to understand. God made covenants in the scriptures. A covenant is an agreement or a promise, sometimes called also a testament or an oath. God made promises. God the Father made such covenants of promise to Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, with the children of Israel through Moses, with Phineas, David, with Christ, and all believers in Christ. The Holy Christian Bible is composed of two chief parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. These two parts are also known as the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Though God made promises to Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, none of these promises were the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant was not made until about 1,500 years before Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, Moses wrote, The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us even us, who are all of us here alive this day. This old covenant was made through the mediator Moses, with the physical descendants of Jacob, the children of Israel. This old covenant continued until Christ came, at which time the old covenant came to an end. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13, we read, In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old, is ready to vanish away. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9 says, He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. 
The new covenant was then made through the mediator, Jesus Christ, with God's Christians who were taken from among the Gentiles, who came to the blood and righteousness of Jesus Christ by faith. But ye are come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We read in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 and 24. The old covenant ceased to exist when Christ came. It is not now in existence, nor has it been in existence for nearly 2,000 years. There is no old covenant people any longer. The old covenant has been replaced by the new covenant. The new covenant is an everlasting covenant made by the Heavenly Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, with only and all believers in Jesus Christ who have come down through the Christian centuries from among the heathen, Gentiles, of the nations of the world into the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. Essential to an understanding of the Holy Christian Bible is a central scriptural truth which is not a concept commonly found in Christendom in our time. That truth is that the Bible is indeed the Holy Christian Bible. That is, all of God's people throughout the entire Bible are only Christians. The way that a man becomes a child of God is by the righteousness of God being imputed to him through faith in Jesus Christ. A child of God is a man who is righteous. The righteousness which he receives comes by imputation from the Heavenly Father through faith in Jesus Christ. Thereby Christ's righteousness is given. It makes no difference whether a man lived 4,000 years before God the Son became incarnate by the Holy Ghost, whether a man lived 1,000 years before God the Son became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, or whether a man lived 1,000 years after Christ came in the flesh. All and only the elect of God become children of God through the righteousness which is of faith in Jesus Christ. Noah, who lived 2,500 years before Christ, was a Christian. Abraham, who lived 2,000 years before Christ, was a Christian. Moses, who lived 1,500 years before Christ, was a Christian. David, who lived 1,000 years before Christ, was a Christian. Habakkuk the prophet, who lived 600 years before Christ, was a Christian. Old devout Simeon, who lived at the time of the incarnation of the Son of God, was a Christian. These men were the children of God by the righteousness of faith in Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 says, Noah became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. In Romans chapter 4 verses 3 and 16 we read, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. It is of faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 verses 24 to 26 we read that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 31, 32, and 33, we read that by faith David also obtained promises. The just shall live by his faith, Scripture says in Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. Simeon said, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Those words are in St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 30. There were promises made before the two covenants were ever made. In Titus, chapter 1, verse 2, St. Paul said, God promised eternal life before the world began. This promise was carried through to God's patriarchs of old. Then God made covenants of promise after the creation, then 1,000 years before and 500 years before the old covenant was ever made through Moses. God promised the coming of the Savior in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, St. Paul wrote to the Ephesian Christians who had been Gentiles and said to them concerning the time when they were Gentiles before they became Christians, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. St. Paul here refers to promises made by God, covenants made by God before the old covenant was ever made through Moses. All the physical descendants of Jacob from the time of Jacob to the time of St. Paul were physical Israelites. Because these physical Israelites were the descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, 
they were recipients of the covenants of promise, to which St. Paul read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. St. Paul spoke of these Israelites in Romans chapter 9, verse 4, and said, To whom pertaineth the covenants. These covenants, of which St. Paul speaks in Romans chapter 9, verse 4, are also covenants of promise made before the old covenant was made through Moses. A covenant made before the old covenant was made through Moses is spoken of by Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 31, as the covenant of thy fathers. Moses speaks of such again in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 13, when he speaks of the land which God swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And again in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, when he speaks of establishing his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. All these scriptures refer to the promises or covenants of promise made by God for the fathers prior to the time of Moses, prior to the time of the old covenant at Mount Oreb. God made a promise to Noah that he would save Noah and his family and the animals that go out of the ark. God promised with his bow in the cloud that the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. God said to Noah, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. These words are recorded in Genesis chapter 9, verses 9, 10, 11, 13, and 15. Noah believed and built the ark. And again, the scripture says, Noah became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Those words are in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. However, we find that the promises and covenants begin chiefly in the father Abraham. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, speaks of Abraham as he that had received the promises. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 6 says that Melchizedek received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. God made promises to Abraham which were specifically and only for Abraham. God made promises to Abraham of a spiritual nature, which were for Abraham and for only his spiritual offspring. God made promises to Abraham of a physical nature, which were for his physical offspring for only a given time. We shall now observe eight different promises which God made to Abraham more than 400 years before the old covenant was ever made through Moses at Horeb and Sinai. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God said to Abraham, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. God made this promise specifically to Abraham, not to antichrists who falsely call themselves the physical and spiritual descendants of Abraham. The fact does remain, however, and is taught throughout the scriptures that finally God blesses those who bless God's people, and God curses and damns those who curse God's people. But the important thing to know is that God's people are only his Christians. Psalm 122, verse 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Jerusalem is the church of Jesus Christ, as the scripture declares in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, Jerusalem, the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. In Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12, we read, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Another promise of God, specifically for Abraham only, was written in Genesis chapter 17, verses 15, 16, and 19. As for Sarai thy wife, I will bless her and give thee a son also of her, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. God made the promises to Abraham that out of Abraham would come the Christ, and that Abraham would be the spiritual father of the Gentiles. God said in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. St. Paul quoted this promise in Galatians chapter 3, verse 8, saying, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, that is the Gentiles, through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. God said to Abraham, as recorded in Acts chapter 3, verse 25, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. In Acts chapter 3, verse 26, St. Peter confirmed it when he said, 
God raised up Jesus to bless you. Here is a prophecy and promise of God to Abraham of the new covenant which was made by God with the Gentiles through the mediator, Jesus Christ. This promise was made to Abraham 2,000 years before the new covenant was made. This promise was made to Abraham nearly 500 years before the old covenant was made through the mediator, Moses. This promise to Abraham is the promise of the gospel, the good news that out of Abraham would come Christ, and that when Christ would bring the old covenant to an end, God would take out of the Gentiles a people for his name. These people would come to Christ in faith from all nations of the world. This promise to Abraham would be fulfilled in the New Testament church, that Abraham might be the father of all them that believe, as St. Paul said in Romans chapter 4, verse 11. This would come to pass that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, as we read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. God promised Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Those words are in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. And St. Paul explained what this promise was when he wrote in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. God promised that out of the loins of Abraham would eventually come the promised Christ, by whom the Gentiles of the earth would be blessed with forgiveness of sins and life eternal by faith. The Pharisees, the workers of the world system of Antichrist, had infiltrated the new Galatian Christian congregations, and they were teaching that this promise of God to Abraham was pluralistic, not singular, and that they are the seeds, the Messiah, the pluralistic messianic Jewish nation by which the Gentiles would be blessed. St. Paul tagged it a lie and said that God saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. The physical genealogy of Jesus is given from Abraham in St. Luke chapter 3, verses 23 to 34, in fulfillment of this prophecy in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. St. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 15, verse 9, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. God told Abraham that he would be a father of many nations in Genesis chapter 17, verses 4 and 5. God said to Abraham, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Those words are in Genesis chapter 15, verse 5. I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, verse 2. Compare also Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 3, and Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 23. Though Abraham sired heathen Ishmael, that would hardly be acceptable to Abraham as a blessing, for what blessing would it be to Abraham to be the father of many heathen? It would be a blessing to be a physical and spiritual father of many Christians, however. So it is that in Hebrews chapter 11, Verses 12 and 13 we read concerning Abraham. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith. St. Paul speaks of Abraham's spiritual children. In Romans chapter 4 he says that Abraham is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham, that Abraham would be heir of an eternal promise. God covenanted with Abraham, that Abraham's seed would also be heirs together with Abraham of the same riches. He said, And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee, in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 7, we read those words. Now we come to the important question. Who are Abraham's seed? Who are heirs according to the promise? The answer is found in St. Paul's epistle to the Christians of Galatia, who had been 
Gentiles, but now were Christians. It is to Christians who had been Gentiles that St. Paul says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, St. Paul wrote those words. Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, he said in Romans chapter 15, verse 11. If you were a heathen, Gentile, who has come to faith, and you belong to Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And this is the promise, St. John, the beloved disciple, said, this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, we read those words. An outward token of the inward cleansing of the heart would be physical circumcision. And it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you, the Lord said in Genesis chapter 17, verse 11. Compare Acts chapter 7, verse 8. This sign of circumcision was the token of that cleansing until Christ came. When Christ established the new covenant, that token of inward cleansing became water baptism, and physical circumcision was done away. St. Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith. Scripture says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. St. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Another promise of a physical nature outwardly, but of a spiritual heavenly nature inwardly, was that concerning a land of promise. God said, And I will give unto thee, he said to Abraham, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, and I will be their God. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 8. And in Romans chapter 4, verse 13, we read, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was to Abraham through the righteousness of faith. We read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 18, The inheritance God gave it to Abraham by promise. The physical aspect of this promise is far less predominant and less important than the spiritual aspect. While God promised this land to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17, verse 8, we read in the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 7 that Abraham came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Charon. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession. Those words are in Acts chapter 7, verses 4 and 5. Should not God be ashamed then to be called his God if God did not keep his promise? No, not if we keep in mind that by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. We read those words in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10 and verse 16. The hardcore antichrist Jew materialists continue to harp, however, on the subject of the promised land while they call the eternal heavenly hope of Christians a pie-in-the-sky theory. Let them be anathema maranatha, St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. Our hope is in heaven. We are begotten by God unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. As St. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. These are the precious covenants of promise to which we were strangers when we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. 
Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. But now in Christ, those who were Gentiles have become God's new covenant, Israel. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. St. Paul said in Romans chapter 11, verse 26, And so all Israel shall be saved. These are the promises, the covenants of promise, made to the fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and extended to all their spiritual heritage. Or as it says in Webster's Collegiate Dictionary of the year 1948 under the word heritage, biblical, God's chosen people, Israel, the Christian church. The subject of the two covenants is uninteresting to all except an extremely small minority because the masses of people are so materialistic and are such mammon worshippers that they are unable to see any relationship between gasoline and the two covenants or between food and the two covenants or between economic inflation and the two covenants. The members of the international sect of the Pharisees, the Jews, who are the workers of the world system of Antichrist, however, fully understand the relationship which exists, for example, between gasoline and the two covenants. If the Jews could make the masses of Christendom and of the world believe that the Jews are God's chosen people, the physical and spiritual children of Abraham with whom God made an everlasting old covenant, then Christendom would give the Jews complete freedom in the world and the Jews would take away the gasoline from the Goy and blame it on the Arabs and hogs, and the Goy, as the Jews call all non-Jews, would believe it. Then next, the Jews would take away the food from the Goy, the people who are called hogs by the Jews, and the Jews would bring death to Christian civilization in bloody revolution and in a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, as Scripture says in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. This is now in the process. The protocols of the learned elders of Zion state, and we quote, that the peoples may become accustomed to obedience, it is necessary to inculcate lessons of humility and therefore to reduce the production of articles of luxury. End of quotation. The following words appeared in the Winrod letter, for March 1973, most people of the world do not own cars, but the car and the freedom to use it as one chooses has become a vital part of the daily American way of life. Now the dispossessed majority is going to be dispossessed of its freedom of movement. This dispossession will not come all at once, but in an immediate future transitional period, many will be reduced to the humility of transporting themselves in very small cars while the Jews will pass by in their big limousines. And many will be required to give up cars, begin riding buses, bicycles, and walking. Before the Jews can bring the masses of people of this nation into total witting subservience, the Jews will first have to take away freedoms of the people. The Jewish manacles will not be seen until first the American people have been reduced to deprivation of material goods and freedom by means of artificially devised methods, heavy taxation, and ruinous inflation. The freedoms must be taken away, and increased poverty must ensue. End of quotation. Please run the cassette to the end of side one, then turn to side two. A Winrod letter for December 1973, we read, Inflation will continue, and its rate will increase. Prices will continue to rise and wages will not begin to keep up with them. Unemployment will also increase. There will be more and more shortages as there were in Russia just before the Jews overthrew the nominally Christian Tsarist government and as there were in China in the 1920s before the Jew takeover there. End of quotation. Jesus said to the Antichrist Jews in St. John chapter 8 verse 44, Ye are of your father the devil. The Jews are not Abraham's children, for Jesus said to them in St. John chapter 8, verse 39, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, St. Paul said to Christians who had been Gentiles, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye 
Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. The scriptures show the following three things about the Old Covenant. First, the Old Covenant was not made with Abraham nearly 2,000 years before Christ, but the Old Covenant was made through Moses about 1,500 years before Christ. Second, the Old Covenant was not an everlasting covenant, but the Old Covenant was a conditional, temporal covenant. Third, the Old Covenant was not eternal, but it came to an end. It came to a complete and final close at the first coming of Christ our Savior nearly 2,000 years ago. The Old Covenant was made through Moses. If the lie-believing nominal Christians initially understood these three facts concerning the Old Covenant, the Antichrist Jews would not be viewed with such favor, and then the first big step would be taken toward reduction of so-called gasoline shortages, reduction of inflation, and reduction of Jews. The Old Covenant was not made through Abraham, but through Moses. Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount. In the New Testament we read, These are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, as St. Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 4, verse 24. The other covenant, the new covenant, was made through our Lord Jesus Christ about 1,500 years later. Moses wrote in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 9 and 15, When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights, and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. It was Moses who led the children of Israel out of Egypt about 1,500 years before Christ. And in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34, we read, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. And in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7 through 9, we read, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, St. Paul refers to the old covenant at the time of Moses as the law, and he refers to the promise made to Abraham as the covenant. St. Paul says, And this I say, that the covenant, the promise made to Abraham, that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, the Mosaic Old Covenant, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, the Mosaic Old Covenant, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Hebrews chapter 9 speaks of the Levitical sacrifices inaugurated at the time of Moses and of the tables of stone upon which was written the law. There we read, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and the tables of the covenant. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves, saying, This is the blood of the testament, the covenant, which God hath enjoined unto you. Those words are in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1, 4, 19, and 20. We read in Exodus chapter 24, verses 6 through 8, And Moses took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. The Old Covenant was the Ten Commandments together with the requirement that they be kept, which God gave to Moses, as the Scripture says in Exodus chapter 34, verses 27 and 28, where we read, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. In Deuteronomy, Moses said, 
and he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God. Those words are in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 13 and 23. Moses said, When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. And the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. Those words are in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 9, 11, and 15. Compare also 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 2 and 21, 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 34 through 36. In Exodus chapter 31, verses 16 and 18, we read, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath for a perpetual covenant. And he gave Moses two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. In Exodus chapter 34, verses 1 and 10, we read, And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Under the leadership of Moses, the children of Israel built a box of wood, overlaid with gold, called the Ark of the Covenant, wherein were stored the two stone tables of the covenant. See Exodus chapter 25, verse 11. In Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 11, we read of this Ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1 and 4, speak of the first covenant, which had the Ark of the Covenant and the Tables of the Covenant. See also Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7 and 13, and Hebrews chapter 9, verse 1. The Mosaic Old Covenant, which God made through Moses with the children of Israel about 1,500 years before Christ, between 400 and 500 years after the time of Abraham, is referred to also in Joshua chapter 22, verse 4, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56, in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 10, in Jeremiah chapter 34, verses 13 and 15, in Haggai chapter 2, verse 5, and also in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. The Old Covenant was a conditional covenant. The Jews and the crypto-Jew preachers preach that the Old Covenant was made through Abraham with the Jews and that it is a perpetual and everlasting covenant of God with the Jews. That is a lie. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, God said through Moses nearly 500 years after Abraham to the children of Israel, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. Then God said through Moses to the children of Israel, But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and I will set my face against you. These words are in Leviticus chapter 26, verses 14 through 17. God said, If thy children will keep my covenant, and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. Those words are in Psalm 132, verse 12. The blessings and curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 show also that the old covenant was conditional. Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2 and 15, If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, all these blessings shall come on thee, but if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, all these curses shall come upon thee. These ifs mean that the old covenant was conditional and breakable. The fact that the Israelites broke it is also certain proof that it was breakable and conditional. God predicted that they would break it, and they did break it. The scripture says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up, and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. 
Those words are in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 16, 17, and 20. God said in Joshua chapter 7, verses 11 and 15, Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. He hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord. Joshua said in Joshua chapter 23, verses 15 and 16, So shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things, when ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. God prophesied that he would make a new covenant with us spiritual people, his elect Christians, which he would gather from among the Gentiles. These would be his Israel and Judah, with whom he would make a new covenant. He said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Those words are in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 and 32. Compare also the following scripture passages. Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 2, 3, 6, 8, and 10. Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 34, verse 18. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 59. Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 2. Judges chapter 2, verse 20. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 11. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 10 and 14. 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 14 and 15. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 12. Psalm 55, 20. Psalm 78, verses 10 and 37. Hosea chapter 6, verse 7. And Hosea chapter 8, verse 1. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23, and in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 14, we read that the Lord God keepest covenant with them that walk before him with all their heart. Because they broke his covenant and did not keep his ten commandments, he said in Numbers chapter 14, verses 23 and 34, Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Compare Zechariah chapter 11, verse 10, and Isaiah chapter 24, verse 5. God said, My covenant they break, in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 32. And he said, They continued not in my covenant, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 9. At the time of Christ, the Pharisees were the physical descendants of Jacob, who were also the ecclesiastical leaders. Jesus said to them in St. Matthew chapter 21, verse 43, Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. That nation, to whom the kingdom of God was then given, are God's elect Christians taken from among the Gentiles. As St. Peter wrote to them, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Those words are in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. These elect Christians received the kingdom of God under the new covenant. The others, the Antichrist Pharisees, St. Paul calls covenant breakers in Romans chapter 1, verse 31. Compare also St. Matthew chapter 23, verse 38, Philippians chapter 3, verse 19, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3, and St. Jude 4. The Old Covenant ended. The Antichrist Jews and the Crypto-Jew preachers claim that the Old Covenant was made through Abraham, that it was an everlasting and unbreakable covenant which could not come to an end. These are all lies. The Old Covenant was made through Moses. It was conditional, and it came to an end. The great living truth of God's word is that now there is no old covenant in effect, and there is no old covenant people. God said that he would make a new covenant with his people, his spiritual Israel, and his spiritual Judah, that is, his elect saints, taken from among the Gentiles. He would not make this new covenant according to the way that he made the first covenant, 
Scripture says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Those words are in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7 through 9 and verse 13. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. The first covenant, the old covenant, continued till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and that seed is Christ. St. Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 and 16. The people today who call themselves Jews are only members of the international sect of the Pharisees, who are of all races and of all nationalities, a conspiratorial antichrist sect, the workers of the world antichrist system, Mystery Babylon the Great of Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, as Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, and in Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. These Jews falsely claimed to be under the Old Covenant, but the Old Covenant was done away nearly 2,000 years ago. Scripture gives two reasons for the Old Covenant. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 19, we read, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. That mediator was Moses. And the old covenant was to serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, the old covenant with its ordinances was a figure for the time then present of things more perfect, the figures of the true. We read in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 9, 11, and 24. We now speak for a moment of three things, a light, an image, and a shadow. Christ is the light. Christ's body, his holy Christian church of the New Testament, is the image. The little old covenant church is the shadow. St. Paul said that the old covenant ordinances were a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Christ's body is the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. The Old Covenant ordinances were precursory patterns of things to come, says Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 says, For the law, the Old Covenant, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never make the comers thereunto perfect. The Old Covenant was temporal and finite. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9 says, He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13 says, He hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. The new covenant is eternal and infinite. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12 says, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. The new covenant is called a better testament in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22. A better covenant which was established upon better promises in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. The everlasting covenant in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. And the new covenant in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Compare Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. The mediator of the Old Covenant was Moses, a mortal man. The Old Covenant was ordained in the hand of a mediator, Scripture says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 19. Compare also Exodus chapter 24 and Exodus chapter 34, verses 5 through 7. The mediator of the New Covenant is the eternal living God, Jesus Christ. Jesus was made a surety of a better testament he is the mediator of a better covenant. It says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, 
and compare also Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. The Old Covenant tabernacle was a temporary material tent. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 9 say that the first covenant had a tabernacle, which was a figure. The church of Jesus Christ of the new covenant, taken from among the Gentiles, is the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man, a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. The body is of Christ, the body, the church. God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David, whose house we are. Those scriptures are in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 2, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11, Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, the book of the Acts chapter 15, verses 14 through 16, and Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. Compare also the prophet Amos chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. Under the Old Covenant, the Scripture says in Exodus chapter 24, verses 5 and 8, that they sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made. But it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins which were a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 4 and 1. But when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 8 and 9. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. St. John chapter 1, verse 29. Jesus took the cup, and he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament. Those words are in St. Mark chapter 14, verses 23 and 24. Compare also Hebrews chapter 9, verses 13 and 14. Under the Old Covenant, as long as the children of Israel kept covenant, the promise which had been made originally to Abraham concerning their inheritance of Canaan's land would continue. In Joshua chapter 23, verse 5, we read, Ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 and 63, we read, If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments, ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. Under the new covenant, God's Christians, Abraham's seed, receive the same inheritance for which Abraham looked, a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God, a better country, that is, and heavenly, an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. As the scriptures declare in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 10 and 16, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Compare also Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. Under the old covenant, some of the physical Israelites were true spiritual Israel. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, that is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, St. Paul said in Romans chapter 9, verses 6 and 8. A physical Israelite who was also a spiritual Israelite, would say to his brother, to his brother physical Israelite who was not a spiritual Israelite, Know the Lord. Those words are in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 11. But no one under the new covenant would say to his brother, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. All of them would be true Israelites, spiritual Israelites. The house of Israel and the house of Judah, the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 11 and 8. Under the old covenant, physical Israel failed, following after the law of righteousness, while under the new covenant, the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, as St. Paul said in Romans chapter 10, verse 30. Moses was the prophet of the old covenant. Christ is the prophet of the new covenant. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, 
A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Those words are in Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Compare also Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 and 18, and Acts chapter 7, verse 37. The Old Covenant Levitical priesthood, which began about 1,500 years before Christ and ended at the coming of Christ, was a type of Christ's priesthood, being an high priest over the house of God, which was after the order of Melchizedek without descent. See Hebrews chapter 10, verse 21, and Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3. Compare also Psalm 110, verse 4. The rest spoken of in Joshua chapter 1, verse 13, in Canaan, under the Old Covenant, was a figure of the Christian's eternal rest under the New Covenant, as spoken of in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. While Jerusalem was the city of God under the Old Covenant, under the New Covenant, the communion of saints, the church of the firstborn, is God's Jerusalem. See Psalm 46, 4, Psalm 48, verses 1 and 8, Psalm 87, verse 3, and Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 and 23. Children born only under the Old Covenant were children only born after the flesh. Children born again into the New Covenant are the children of promise, as Isaac was, St. Paul said in Galatians chapter 4, verses 28 and 29. Sinai gendereth to bondage and corresponds to Jerusalem, which became Mystery Babylon as spoken of in Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, in bondage with her children, while the true Jerusalem, Christ's church, is free, our mother, under the new covenant. We read in Galatians chapter 4, verses 25 and 26, For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. The new covenant to be made with God's elect of the Gentiles was promised even before the old covenant was made. For we read in Galatians chapter 3, verses 7, 8, and 14, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. St. Paul wrote, therefore, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 24, These are the two covenants.